Hey, good morning, everybody. John here at Epic Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. I know I certainly did. Uh, managed to get a, a game of Marvel Christ Protocol in using some a uh, bunch of new characters. I'm working on a battle report slash. Uh, I don't know what else to call it except for a battle report. There is uh, a chance to be a play tester for Atomic Mass Games. And I'm assuming towards Marvel Christ Protocol because that's what the link takes you to. And that is what I'm aiming for with the battle report is one of the requirements that you um, uh, contribute. And even though I've got another one, this was, a, I think, a much better battle report um, or will be. So I might be able to get up on the blog that I've just started over at Blogspot. I will have that link in the description below. So head on over, give it a good read. It's not the battle report. It is actually a um, review of the past weekend battle for the Bayou 2 and LVO qualifier. Um, it was held at the Atomic a hobby shop in Cypress, Texas. They had 16 players. Uh, the blog kind of goes over the stats for the top three players, including the rosters, what uh, tactics and crises that they brought along and a bunch of other numbers that you might find interesting. And including at the end of that blog is a link taking you to the results page. So I would give it a good look over, especially if you like crunching numbers and you want to see what, um, what cards are being used, what characters are being used, what's winning, what's not winning. Uh, just for full disclosure, some of the information is a little bit off because some people weren't uploading uh, all the necessary information on each round. They weren't uh, going into the system and putting down, well, we use these crisis uh, or this team tactics cards or whatever the results were, their, what teams that they were using the most or what characters. Uh, it's, it's one of those kind of um, house cleaning things that should be done so we can kind of keep track of uh, numbers like that, keep track of the statistics. So it is going to be a little off, so don't panic if you don't see your favorite team or characters or whatever doing well, because the numbers are going to be a little off. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're going to talk about Electra. This is most certainly not a hot take, but it is kind of a hot take. The information just dropped a little bit ago, and I'm very thankful because it's been about three weeks since we've seen it. I think, uh, well, about 22 days, three weeks, which actually I think it might have been over three weeks. At any rate, it's been a long time since we've had a Marvel Crisis protocol update, and I'm very thankful for that Atomic Mass Games put that information out there. I know that they've got other games to take care of, and we've been very spoiled when it comes to receiving the information, at least for the past year. So, yay, we got our information. And the last of the new, soon to be released models, trying to think of the words to describe that, are is now being revealed. Uh, we have no other miniatures, no other character packs or anything else that are slated right now, and not even a sneak peek of what's coming down the line. So we have no idea what comes after this. So this is the last character that we need to be seeing uh, before we get the new range of characters. Now, I've talked about Elektra and uh, Daredevil, Nick Fury before. We have no idea when they're coming out. Um, their web, like on the Atomic Mass Games page, it says quarter one 2022 on the asmo day who handles the distribution for marvel crash protocol it says release date is 4 30 uh, so april 30th uh, 2022 spiky bits and a few other sites are saying they go on pre-order march 11th and another website that's a very i would say a very trusted site they've been i would say about 80 85 percent accurate uh, saying that they're going to be going on pre-order the next Friday. So I, I think that's the 4th and then being released on the 11th. So a lot of weird dates going around. I'm sure there's a lot more. If you guys happen to have some insider information, put it in the comments below or go ahead and uh, there should be able to email to me if you want to keep it private. Just tell me, hey, don't reveal my name or where you got this from, but here's the information. Oh, okay, cool. I'll totally keep it confidential. So let's take a look at Electra. A lot of people are kind of excited about Electra. She's a really cool character. She's got a really awesome story in the Marvel 
comics universe. And to be totally honest, I don't think there's a time that, at least in the comic books world, um, even in the MCU, she was played by Jennifer Gardner, and I can't remember the, the the actress that really looked the part. She was in the Daredevil TV show and the Defenders. Uh, she nailed it. And uh, I, I can't think of a time that they've ever done a bad job where it's like, ugh, they just ruin Elektra. I don't think they've ever done that. I think she's one of those characters that they've left largely untouched. Even... Uh, the, you know, if you want to throw in kind of political stuff, the, the left, the right, the in between, everybody's just left her alone largely. So I'm really super stoked about that. And now let's just get into the character. If you don't know her story, we'll do another video. Once the model comes out, we got it in hand. We'll do a little bit of a lore dive for Electra, or as she is known in some parts as Electra Nachos, Nachos trying to think of how to say the Greek name. So let's take a look at her cards. We don't have any other Team Tactics cards or anything, but I don't think we need it. Um, we just need to see what her character uh, can do. And let me pull up a bigger picture so my, my bad eyes can see it. So as you guys are seeing there, um, top to bottom, left to right side, we're gonna read this. The only difference between her healthy side and her Day side is she does lose one wound going from a total from both sides of 11. Um, she's going to go from six on healthy to a five on the uh, day side. So other than that, besides the wounds, she's got medium movement. Very, that may, totally makes sense. Size two makes sense. Threat four is very interesting. Um, and then she's got threes on all of her defenses. I mean, she is essentially a normal human being. So the, the threes and what you add in all of her training, and everything, all this makes sense. So her first attack or her first ability is the mystical attack of ancient throwing blades. She's got it at range three, which is pretty gosh darn good after this weekend, after getting a bunch of range three attacks out. I really like range three, uh, five dice, pretty good and zero cost power. This is very typical of the, at least one to two of the first powers that characters have. Um, if you happen to roll the wild symbol, you're going to get pierced, which is always good. It means you get to reroll one of their six or turn one of their success dice for defense into a blank and always, I'm going to really highly recommend this unless there's something about the character that you're attacking, get some extra benefit if they've got like a wild symbol or the shield symbol. Always, always go for that critical success. Turn that to a blank because that negates, um, that, that'll help negate things. So bleed is the other one. If you happen to get a wild symbol that you also get the bleed, get the bleed special condition, which is very damaging. Oh. Uh, after the attack is resolved, this is very similar to Daredevil's basic attack. If there is not an allied hand ninja's character in play, place it in play within range one of Electra with an activated token. It's part of your squad. And if you know that once the, the ninjas come in, they get to do an attack. So uh, you're kind of in a way, as long as they're not on the table, when they do spawn, you're getting basically a lovely little three attack round. Now, her other attack ability is physical. It's called Impale. So it's range one. So this is real up close and personal, especially if you are uh, playing with uh, or going after Bullseye. They've got a very storied history. Uh, range one, which is very close, obviously, and eight dice, but for five power. So this is a very costly attack. However, if an allied care, uh, allied hand ninjas are um, within range two of her, especially if you had just popped them out, the defending care, um, you get to add two dice to your attack roll. So now you're at 10 dice. Really, really awesome. And the defending character does not add critical success results in its defense rolls to its total successes and cannot add additional dice to its defense roll as a result of that. It's almost like a built-in hex special condition, which doesn't allow you to spawn um, an additional roll if you get a critical success. After the attack is resolved, the character can advance medium. Always, I, I really, especially after this weekend, 
the ability to attack and then um, get an extra movement out of it is really awesome because it can get you out of uh, attack range, especially if there's area of effect attacks and you're, maybe you're too close to your allies and you're about ready to get hit, uh, nuked uh, with um, an area of effect attack or to go and claim an objective, pick up an objective. Really awesome. I love those attack and um, movement abilities. So let's get into our superpowers. Um, well, before we do that, if you haven't noticed, almost every single character out there, their basic attack, which in this case, her ancient throwing blades, usually has a an ability that says, hey, after you do this attack, uh, attack gain one power or you gain power equal to the damage that you've dealt if you haven't noticed she does not have that so getting building up power is going to be a kind of slow but we're going to get there don't worry it's don't don't panic yet i panicked when i first saw it or lack lack of seeing it but we're going to get there assassin step uh, assassin's step is a reactive superpower Cost two, when this character damages an enemy character with an attack, after the attack is resolved, you can use this power. Place this character within range one of the damaged character. It can be used only once per turn. Okay, especially with that range three attack with the ancient throwing blades. You attack them and pop that two power. Now you're next to them. It's another one of those free movement abilities. And then if you had the power to do an impale, also, now you're moving even more. You can get some, I think, some great movement out of her. She's really going to be popping up like a ninja. Smoke bombing, popping up, smoke bomb, pop up. Really cool. Martial prowess is her other reactive power. It's going to cost two. When this character is targeted by an attack within range two, you can use the power. Instead of rolling dice equal to your defense, which you're only sitting at three, it rolls five defense dice, which is really good. Then uh, if this character suffers no damage, and this is the great kicker here, if you suffer no damage from that attack, and pretty good chance, um, especially after getting some more games in, you're starting to see how that works. Uh, after the attack is resolved, the attacker takes two damage, just takes two damage. You don't get to defend it against it, just take it. And I think that's a really cool, especially given her um, abil inability really to gain power frequently so how does she get power well besides taking damage and maybe say a secure uh, maybe out there you're playing a secure mission or something you pick something up that helps generate power like uh, cosmic cube for example she has an innate ability called out for blood when this character deals damage to an enemy character with an attack or superpower after the attack or superpower is resolved this character gains one power okay well there you go it's an innate ability so as long as she is doing damage and looking at her abilities like martial prowess, ancient throwing blades, and impale, she's got a chance to generate up to three power a turn. Plus, of course, if she takes damage and the, the power phase and if she happens to have um, like Cosmic Cube or something that gives her power. So she's not a power generating machine, but it's there. It's still built in. So you still got to do damage. But I'm um, oh, sorry, when this guy, yeah, when you have, you have to still have to do damage, but after it's all done, you're going to get power. And then she's got stealth, which is going to really help her out too. The character must be within range th three um, of this character to target it with attack. So if you're going after her, kind of like a Black Widow, if you're going after Electra, you've got to be within range three. So a lot of those characters out there with those range three or range four, even range five beam attacks, uh, you got you got to move up close. And with her ability to do an attack, get a movement, do an attack, get a movement, um, it, this pretty this this character is pretty going to be pretty good um, and be able to move around. So it's going to be hard to target her first off, and then even when you're you can target her if she's got power, she's going to be pretty well off with five defense dice, and then of course all of her attack abilities and counter reactive abilities. Um, at a four cost, I, I feel like it's a little costly. I, I need to play um, a couple games with her, maybe even maybe a TTS game, or even just sit down uh, with a couple friends and just proxy her in. Um, is she a must-have? 
I don't know yet, guys. I'm going to be totally honest with you. Um, this is a kind of a baffling character for me. Uh, but I think right now, love her. I think her, her abilities are really cool. I think the uh, chances of, of popping up all over the place, getting those, I say free movement abilities, but they're not really free, but uh, they're, they're kind of free between assassin step and um, impale and such. Be able to bounce around is really, really cool. She, the only thing I'm concerned with is her power generation. Um, you like she, the only ways to generate power right now is really just she has to take damage or use her main attack abilities to get one at a time or burn two for martial prowess to gain one. I guess you wouldn't do it. It was just like, I guess you're not going to be using that to gain power because it's, you're burning it. Um, that, that would be very inefficient. Uh, man, I'm really stuck on this character. I really want her to be really good. But as we see with a lot of Marvel characters, uh, they look really good on paper, literally, or cardboard, whatever this is. And then they, uh, once they get to the tabletop, they perform vastly different. Like uh, used Miss Marvel in the, my past two games. Looks really cool on paper, uh, but she is such a non-threat. She is only in the games I've used. She just sits and caps an objective and everybody just leaves her alone. Uh, maybe it's because her miniature, I've never gone in big in yet. Well, I've gone in big in once, um, but most of the time she's in this little tiny character model and she sits by an objective and just caps it. I mean, it's great for claiming objective, but it right now I'm not super impressed with her. I have not used her in Web Warriors yet, and that's where everybody seems to think that she's going to be doing amazing. So maybe I should try her in Web Warriors. I don't know. I'm letting this video go on a little longer than I wanted to. Let me know what you guys think of Electra. Is she is she going to be really as meh as it kind of looks, or is there a hidden gem in there that I'm not seeing right now? I think I just need to play test her personally. I think I just need to get a solid playtest game or two in her, maybe three. I think I'd like to do three games really to make a, a judgment call, but I'm just excited that we've got her on the tabletop. I'm excited that uh, Atomic Mass Games has updated Marvel Christ Protocol um, for us. And I'm really looking forward to what's gonna be coming down the line. I'm gonna be doing another speculation video real soon. Um, I've got, I don't want to say reliable information because it's most certainly not reliable. It's I think it's more wish listing I, as I'm reading into the uh, little bit of information I got. I feel like it's wish listing, not really rumor, but we're still going to go ahead and cover it and see how that goes. Anyways, you guys have yourself a wonderful day. Let me know what you think of the video down in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and I will chat with you a little later. See you guys.